Edible Plants Part 6. The numbers are ending times. Malbus fucus is one of the many different crab apples. It's an Oregon crab apple. It is native from Alaska to California. They are closely related to uh, regular apples. They are just generally smaller and uh, more tasty, usually quite sour. They're very high in pectin, so they're good for making jellies or combining with other fruits. Some caution is advised because their seeds contain cyanide compounds, but in small amounts it doesn't hurt you. Some of these crab apples do have thorns. That's not surprising there in the rose family. Black medic are actually closely related to alfalfa. The seed is the main edible part. You can also eat the leaves. It would mainly be used as a pot herb. The seed should be roasted. It is a trypsin inhibitor and interferes with protein digestion. The fruit is a pod. It doesn't open when it matures. The arched pod contains a single seed. It is often planted by farmers for nitrogen fixation. The seeds of stick leaf or blazing star are edible. They're usually parched and then ground into flour. It is one of the staples of some western tribes. The seeds are very small. The flowers themselves are very beautiful and very distinctive. At least some species are. They can be found growing in the desert or up in the mountains. The leaves of ice plants are edible. You can eat them raw or cooked. They also have a fruit. It's also edible. You can make pickles out of the leaves. They can be cooked like spinach. They are reported to have a salty flavor, but I didn't notice it. They are very common here in Southern California near, near highways. They are often planted in parks as ground cover. The plants are slightly mucilaginous or they're slimy. Microceras have edible roots. They exude a bitter white milky juice that is sometimes eaten raw. The plants are quite variable in appearance. In general, they look somewhat like a dandelion with leaves like grass. They are native to western North America. Monkey flowers are a very widespread group of plants. They all have edible leaves, but some of them are pretty bitter. Some of them grow in very dry chaparral-like areas. Others are semi-aquatic. Monkey flowers tend to concentrate sodium chloride and other salts in their tissues. They have been used as a salt substitute. They grow very prolifically here in Southern California. Poverty weed is a monolepsis. Monolepsis are members of the amaranth family. They have edible leaves, roots, and seeds. The leaves are very good as greens. The root is small, but with an um, acceptable flavor. The seeds can be dried and ground into a powder mixed with water. Monotropa, or Indian pipe, are said to be tasteless when eaten raw. They taste very much like asparagus and they're quite good when cooked though, supposedly. The plants are parasites and they don't have any chlorophyll. They somewhat resemble broom rape, which is another parasitic plant. They are both edible in similar ways, so it's not a big deal if you confuse them. Watercress are members of the mustard family. They are often served in high-end restaurants as uh, garnishes. They have a very pleasant flavor. The plants are semi-aquatic and usually found in water. We used to pick them in the wintertime in Hot Springs, South Dakota. The water was very warm. They don't stay fresh for very long though. The seeds of yellow pond lily are the main edible part. There are reports that the root is also edible, but it's probably not worth the trouble. The seeds can be very bitter. That can be reduced by boiling in water and, and replacing the water. You probably shouldn't eat too much of the roots Large quantities could be toxic. The entire evening primrose plant is edible. The seeds are used as oil. The roots are usually boiled. Young shoots can be either eaten raw or boiled. The stigma in the flower has a very distinctive cross on it. That's a very good diagnostic feature. I tried to highlight it. 
The leaves are said to have a peppery flavor. Desert ironwood trees are members of the pea family. They can be found growing in very dry places. The plant has edible seeds. They are said to taste very similar to uh, soybeans. The flavor is said to be improved if, it, if the water is changed after boiling. The wood is very hard. It's widely used in making knife handles. They somewhat resemble cat claw acacias. I remember being introduced to prickly pears as food. That was during Navy survival training in Pensacola. It was the only food we had after two days. It tasted pretty good. All we ate were the roots. That's not generally considered the part that's best to eat. Usually the leaves are eaten. You can also eat the fruit. The leaves are very high in vitamin A. They are very commonly sold in Mexican supermarkets around here. They are generally cut up into small pieces and fried. Some species are somewhat toxic, so you should be a little careful. Broom rape is a parasitic plant. The plants can be either roasted, boiled, or eaten raw. They're usually species specific and they can often be very damaging to uh, crops. The whole plant is essentially edible. Their seeds can remain in the ground for many years. They'll just wait until some plant releases chemicals near them that start it growing. Then its roots attach to the other plant's roots and uh, it gets all the, all the nutrients it needs from the other plant. Indian potatoes are members of the carrot family. They are not related to true potatoes. They do have tuberous like roots though. The roots can be eaten raw, roasted, or baked. They are usually found in wetlands, but not, not always. Often they are found in uh, pine forests. Indian rice grass can be eaten either raw or dried and ground into a flour. It has been used for food since prehistoric times by many native tribes. The seeds are fairly large for a grass plant. It's probably easiest to uh, parch the seeds to remove the hairs. They can be found from the desert up into uh, ponderosa pine forests in the mountains. They're generally found east of the Cascades in the western United States. It is cultivated in Montana as a gluten-free grain. Also berries are rather unremarkable berries. They're reported to not be very good tasting. They are related to apples, members of the rose family. They're said to have a somewhat almond-like flavor. That could, be, uh, that could mean that it's very high in hydrogen cyanide, so sh probably shouldn't eat too much. The fully ripe fruit loses most of its bitterness. It also only has a thin layer of flesh. The roots and seeds of sweet sicily are used as flavoring. They are said to have a strong anise flavor. You need to exercise caution because there are some deadly relatives. The seeds of the plant will stick to your clothes. It is related to anise, fennel, and caraway and can be used in much the same way. Oxalis oregana, or redwood sorrel, is a member of the very large family sorrels. They're all edible, but they have a compound in them that can be toxic. It's uh, oxalic acid. That's what gives them its sour taste. It also makes them dangerous because oxalic acid reacts in your blood and it precipitates out as calcium oxalate crystals. They can uh, block up your, they can block up your blood veins and uh, cause damage, internal damage, especially in the kidneys. The plants are high in vitamin C, vitamin A. They're good, but just don't eat too much of them. Mountain sorrels aren't that closely related, but they do have the same problem of having calcium oxalate. Those plants are very high in uh, vitamin C, but again, you need to be careful not to eat too much of it. Mountain sorrel grow all the way up into the Arctic, where they're very important for their vitamin C content. That's the end of part six.